Hi, in this video I am going to talk about uh, what is a sex link genetic disorders and today uh, we have two questions and as usual I recommend you to stop video here, read the questions, try to uh, answer both questions on your own first and when you would be ready you can run video again and you can compare your answer with my answer and explanation. So here is the first question. Sex link disease are most common in boys because, and here is example, uh, here we have uh, two X chromosomes of the female and when uh, we have two X chromosomes that means that this is uh, female and here would be X and Y chromosome and uh, when we have X and Y chromosomes, that means that this is going to be a male. So here is a sign for the male and here is a sign for female. Both uh, female and male would produce gametes and female would produce gametes that we call X cells and uh, male would produce gametes that we call sperm. And of course uh, gametes would be haploid that means that in the gametes we can find only whether this X chromosome or this X chromosome. And a male uh, would produce sperm with whether this X chromosome or this Y chromosome. So let's find what the variants we may uh, find if we uh, made this couple. So uh, female may give to the progeny this X chromosome, this would be first variant, and uh, male may give this X chromosome, so the progeny would be phenotypically normal. Uh, the second variant would be when female would give to the progeny this X chromosome, and male would uh, give this X chromosome, so we would have um, female, but uh, who is going to be a carrier of the genetic disorder. And genetic disorder that we designate with the color here uh, is recessive genetic disorder. So when we have one normal X chromosome, that means that uh, this normal X chromosome would hide uh, the effect of this recessive X chromosome or gene uh, on this um, X chromosome that stand for the genetic disorder that is going to be recessive. Now let's uh, see what other variants we have here. We may also have variant that this couple would produce a male whose genotype going to be normal X chromosome and normal Y chromosome. And the second variant would be uh, this uh, X chromosome and normal Y chromosome. And as you see, this male would be uh, affected with this genetic disorder because this male doesn't has uh, another X chromosome to balance the recessive uh, allele on this X chromosome because Y chromosome uh, is not um, homologous chromosome to the X chromosome because uh, here on the Y chromosome we can find about 200 genes only and on the X chromosome there are about 2000 genes. So uh, this two uh, chromosomes only aligned during meiosis because they have small fragments uh, that is homologous and that's why we call male hemizygous for the X chromosome because female has another chromosome that can balance recessive genetic disorder and females 50% uh, as you see would be uh, carriers but males, because doesn't have another uh, X chromosome with the same normal um, gene, 
to balance this defective gene or mutated gene and we call uh, such males uh, or actually all males uh, hemizygous for the X chromosome so uh, in males 50% males we would see this genetic disorder uh, due to hemizygosity and next question a woman is a carrier of hemophilia and she is heterozygous and she marries a healthy male who is normal for this trait what percent of the offspring will have hemophilia and uh, we can answer this question uh, using example above we can build such a table or uh, we also can build a Punnett square so um, female would be heterozygous so her genotype would be X and capital stands for the normal allele and X small n that is stand for the uh, recessive allele and uh, male would be X and capital that stands for the normal allele and Y chromosome so males are hemizygous so uh, only one X chromosome is present and as you see males are phenotypically normal in our example so what kind of progeny they would produce so here we would have X capital N X capital N here we would have X capital N and X small n so uh, as you see 50 percent of the female offspring would be genotypically normal and uh, phenotypically normal and 50 percent of the progeny female progeny would be uh, genotypically carriers but phenotypically still would be normal and uh, also this couple would have uh, 50% of the offspring uh, to be males and 50% of them would be phenotypically normal so uh, N capital stands for the normal allele and as you see 50% of the males would be uh, phenotypically um, express this genetic disorder uh, the same picture as we see here 25% of the total uh, offspring would express this genetic disorder and that means that 50% of the males would express this genetic disorder and none of the uh, females and the same picture here uh, we see 25% in the progeny would have this genetic disorder one out of uh, four and uh, also that means that 50% of, of the males would express this genetic disorder so uh, the same picture as above but in our first example we used a forked line method and here we used Punnett square and as you see results are the same so this is all for today thank you for your attention Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments, questions if you have any. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.